Brock Lesnar is one of the most divisive figures in pro wrestling today, but if you've watched literally any What Culture video I've ever made, you'll know that I, Andy H. Murray, absolutely love the guy. One reason for this is the incredible and unique aura and presence he brings to every single occasion as a genuine special attraction. Another is because it's just plain fun to watch him suplex little dudes around like a beach ball in a whirlwind. But the most important reason of all is that the man just doesn't give a Donald Duck. In the minds of his critics, this manifests as selfishness, not respecting the business and generally marching to the beat of his own drums. And for many, this just won't do. Now one of those people is Jake the Snake Roberts, who recently said that by having Brock as the top guy, WWE were, and I quote, really treating the rest of their talent like SHIT. But whether you agree with Jake the Snake or not, let's take a look at some of Brock's more infamous moments. I'm Andy for What Culture Wrestling, and here are eight times Brock Lesnar disrespected WWE. Number eight, wrestling is not real, quotation marks. If there's one thing guaranteed to hack hardcore wrestling fans off, it's saying that the sport is not real or fake, even though it's definitely both and, you know, we should probably be over that by now. But I digress. To some, it's the ultimate cop-out insult, and Lesnar pulled it at a pre-fight press conference for his UFC clash with Alistair Overeem in December 2011. When asked about his WWE past and a potential return to the ring, he simply said, Wrestling is not real. This wasn't even the first time he'd done it, of course, as he referred to wrestling as a fake sport back in 2009. Now, to be fair to Lesnar, he was trying to shift focus away from sports entertainment and towards his very real abilities as an MMA fighter but he sure did piss the wrestling world off on both occasions, something he has always done a little bit better than most. Number seven, his conditions for signing in 2000. Brock had never really been a wrestling fan prior to signing with WWE in 2000, but knew that with the physical attributes he had, he could be a success. At the time, he had WCW, WWE, and New Japan all vying for his John Hancock, but in the end, WWE won out, offering him a monster $250,000 a year deal to train and work at Ohio Valley Wrestling. It was one hell of a contract, but Lesnar didn't want to sign unless Vince McMahon met several other conditions, one of which was signing his old Minnesota teammate Shelton Benjamin. And while it's safe to say that this didn't exactly turn out to be a mistake, Shelton rules, it was a hugely ballsy move from a guy who'd never even worked a match before. Number six, refusing to work with Bob Holly. A hard-nosed WWE veteran, Bob Holly was a very serious man who demanded a very serious level of respect, and if you didn't do that, he'd stiff the piss out of you. Hell, even if you did, there's a good chance Big Bad Bobo was still gonna play grumpy old granddad and take it out on you. Such is his legacy. Now, while Lesnar claimed to like Bob, calling him a good guy who takes his ish seriously, Brock just straight up didn't want to work with him in 2004. Here's what he said about hardcore. Now I have to travel all the way to South Africa to work Bob Holly. Can anybody tell me why? I knew nobody wanted to see that match. I really needed a break by this point, but John Laurinaitis told me how much I was needed on the card against Bob Holly. Are you shitting me? Never one to mince his words, Lesnar clearly felt that he'd worked with Holly enough after beating him at Royal Rumble 2004, and while they did wrestle each other on SmackDown a few weeks later, Brock won in two minutes. Kel Surprise. Number five, squaring up to The Undertaker at UFC 121. The Undertaker and Lesnar had a brief but tense altercation after Brock was TKO'd by Cain Velasquez at this UFC event. The dead man was being interviewed when Lesnar wandered past. They went face to face, Taker said, you wanna do it? And Brock buggered off, setting social media ablaze. Obviously, it's The Undertaker. You don't step to The Undertaker. You don't do anything that could be deemed even remotely disrespectful to The Undertaker. And while it was reported that the two staged this thing to drum up interest for a potential WrestleMania match, Brock claimed otherwise. He told Ariel Helwani the following, I enjoyed working with Mark in the ring, but me and him, well, there were some things that were said that really pissed me off. 
Brock then stated that he'd said some things, Taker had said some things, it had all come back to both of them, and the confrontation was very real. Now it's up to you to decide who you want to believe here, friends, but Lesnar usually isn't one to mess around. Number 4. Throwing the Belt not only did Brock Lesnar throw the Universal Championship across the production area like an unwanted toy after beating Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 34, as revealed on WWE 24 special documentary, but he threw it at Vince McMahon. Lesnar really launched the title right at his boss's head, and Vince, understandably, was pissed. As reported by Pro Wrestling Sheets' Ryan Satin in the aftermath, there was a real-life verbal altercation between the two, with talk that Lesnar may have gone off script towards the end of that failed match with Reigns. And while some people called it a work, I believe that Dave Meltzer's explanation is the likeliest. This was just Brock showing that he's Brock, and he can do whatever the hell he wants and get away with it, because in real life, that's the situation. Number 3. Renaming the F5 When cut from the Minnesota Munchkins practice squad in the NFL in 2004, Brock knew that he needed to go back to work, but he'd naively signed a six-year no-compete clause banning him from working in any MMA or wrestling company that wasn't WWE. But regardless, it's Brock. So he pissed off to Japan, making his New Japan debut in the Tokyo Dome in October 2005. And what did he do? He won the IWGP heavyweight title in a triple threat with Kazuyuki Fujita and Masa Chono. Now, the move he used to win was, of course, the F5, but he wasn't allowed to legally use that name. So what did he call it instead? The Verdict. This was a super cheeky move because it was a direct reference to his ongoing battle with WWE over the no-compete clause. Lesnar was gloating, big time. But on the flip side, WWE did have a couple of other wrestlers in Big Show and Matt Morgan use the F5 while their former next big thing was out of the company. Really, they disrespected each other both way around, so in a way, it balances out. Number 2. Changing his mind in 2005 As hacked off as WWE were over Lesnar quitting to try out for the NFL in 2004, they still recognized him as a draw and were keen to sign him back whenever Brock was down to do business. He decided that that time was June 2005, generating mass excitement amongst fans, particularly when Brock said the following in the press. I'm ready for it now with the lawsuit and everything going on, I just hope Vince can open his doors to me and give me a second chance. Vince and Lesnar entered negotiations that July and everything was looking peachy hell. WWE.com even ran a story on it, posting a picture of Brock at WWE headquarters and quoting him as saying he was fired up about coming back. They'd even gone so far as sacking several other performers earlier that month to free money up for a lucrative Lesnar contract offer. But despite all this, despite several people losing their jobs, Lesnar didn't sign with the company, despite every report suggesting it was a done deal. All kinds of explanations were thrown around, including WWE lowballing him on the contract and the Beast refusing to work house shows. But whatever the case, if Lesnar did string the WWE and their fans along like that, then, well, that's pretty disrespectful. And number one, walking out in 2015. Brock Lesnar walked out of WWE at the Raw taping on February 23rd, 2015. This news sent shockwaves through the industry as he was the reigning WWE Heavyweight Champion at the time and the company was just a few weeks away from WrestleMania, making fans and the media ask the question of whether or not he'd even be around to defend the belt in the biggest match on the biggest show of the whole damn year. The walkout was shrouded in mystery, but it soon emerged that Lesnar's issue was all about his contract. It went down during contract negotiations. Brock's deal was set to expire in April 2015, and WWE wanted to keep him, but Lesnar reportedly stormed out of the building he stormed out of the meeting when somebody said something that rubbed him the wrong way. That's not really something you can do in a business's respect driven as pro wrestling. And of course, Lesnar supporter Steve Austin can probably attest to that, and by walking out, Lesnar let down his bosses, his peers, and most importantly, the fans who paid money to see him perform. Did he give a damn? Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar always wins. And everybody else, well, they just get mad about it. So that's our list, but what do you guys think of Brock Lesnar and his dastardly antics, and can you think of any other examples? 
Let us know down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Once you've done that, you can follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and myself at AndyHMurray, where you can tell me how wrong I am. Bye!